Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the uh, Morning Edge. As I mentioned, um, Blake is going to be out today. He's taking a three-day weekend, spend uh, some time golfing. So uh, I'm going to go in and fill in for him uh, during the Morning Edge, and um, we'll go in and move into the uh, FX crew. Cruise push push into new highs. Got a little bit of resistance here at 42.35, but the, <clears throat> the modus operandi on Fridays has been don't get in the way of crude, and that's kind of playing out, and on top of that, we've seen Brent launch, and for the most part, um, WTI has been following Brent uh, for the last two weeks. Kind of, you know, gave a little bit of a pushback over the last 48 hours, but now with uh, Brent getting over those uh, prior highs of the 41.50, solidly getting over it, uh, that's really kicked the uh, WTI into some high gear, and no one's going to be willing to go in and fight it as we come into a Friday. Essentially, that's what has been for the last uh, three weeks. You just don't fight crude on the Friday. And we've seen the, the dollar uh, strengthen some uh, against, the, against the euro. We've seen the euro pull back a little bit as the dollar move got a little bit overextended. I think it has more to do with positioning. We talked about that. Uh, those that were proven right uh, didn't have no reason to go in and get out of the positions anytime soon. And then as we extended the move, which we did yesterday, uh, then people will size up where to go in and uh, maybe take some shorts. We talked about the 1343 area uh, yesterday. Uh, which we were talk, talked about in the uh, chat room where I pointed out looking for possibly a move to 1365, and I thought that would set it up for a nice short for some aggressive traders. But we didn't make that final push to 1365, so we've weakened. But we've come into some support at the top of the zone, which is 1166. Uh, 1176 to 1255. So we did find some support. We bounced off of that about 40, 40 pips or so, but we're starting to weaken back a little bit. Uh, let's go and take a look at what we've got coming into the session as far as economic reports. So we have a Canadian uh, CPI inflation. Uh, also, we have uh, Canadian retail sales. Uh, both of those coming up at 8:30 uh, past the half hour, uh, or 8:30, I should say, <clears throat> Eastern time. And then coming to the U.S. session at 10 a.m. Eastern, we do have a University of Michigan uh, preliminary uh, report. Uh, last month was 90.70. They are expecting an uptick in the Reuters poll um, at 92.20. Obviously, if you go into the innards of the index, uh, we have our uh, conditions index as well as our expectations. But obviously, the, the driver is going to be the uh, the headline number. That's what we're going to go on uh, the market be focusing on. Later on, we have ECRI, but really the main uh, driver for today, if you want to call it the main driver or key report the market will lean off of, is going to be this uh, University of Mi Michigan. Uh, so the markets uh, like the spoos will probably stay in check overall until we get to 10 a.m. Eastern, see how they want to go on and trade that. Um, they are expecting an uptick as the overall um, concerns and worries about what was happening. Uh, across the globe, even though this is the University of Michigan, but still there was all those concerns and headlines about stock market selling off. Um, so I think we're, we're, we, the overall market's expecting um, an uptick, and so we're seeing that 92.2 versus last month's 9070. Obviously, we push them a little bit higher. That may spook the spooze up just a little bit higher to test some ranges uh, above this key area, which is 2034 and a quarter, which we'll go into details on that, and we'll have some levels above the market. But uh, 
the, other than the Michigan Consumer Confidence, which would be the preliminary number, that's about it for the U.S. session. Um, as I mentioned, we'll have Canadian retail sales and Canadian inflate, inflation. I'm not really paying too much attention about what came in overnight of German PPI and Eurozone labor. It, to me, it really doesn't matter. We've already had the big move in the Euro, and we just this the other, uh, I think it was yesterday, on the European crossover. All those other numbers at this point don't really make any, any difference whatsoever. It's just about positioning. Everybody that was proven right, or those that were proven right, uh, you know, at post FOMC, we're not going to relinquish their longs anytime soon. So they're going to push and squeeze it. And we did see that much higher price, you know, in, in the euro versus the dollar. Uh, despite some news that came in during the European session yesterday mo morning. Um, and that was just a matter of where do you pick the levels to go and exit out some of your longs. And we talked about that 1343 and probably there'll be some people tightening up their steps around 1329. Sure enough, we, we got that and pushed it lower towards the 113. We were looking around 1312, but uh, it didn't quite make it up to levels that we were talking about, aggressive shorts to come in, which was 1356. And then on the chat room, we were looking for potentially a target of 1365, where I thought aggressive shorts could go in and come in at that point, but didn't quite make it up uh, back up to uh, or towards uh, the 1365. So we're going to move in here on the uh, on the euro, and we'll look at some other FX pairs. Uh, if anybody wants to look at any cross rates, uh, go and let me know. And then uh, from there, we'll probably take a look at gold, then uh, maybe crude uh, sooner. As I told you, we're kind of kind of coming up against a key area, this 42.35. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, Brent's scooting up higher, and uh, one of the stories that's gaining a little bit of traction is his demand out of India and is expected to come up really strong. So even though I think the market's really stretched up here, you take into consideration uh, the news coming out of India that or news uh, uh, attributing some strong demand uh, to come out of, of India or continue to come out of India has really got the market you know, on the bid. And like I said, uh, you know, when you come into Friday over the last three weeks in crude, you just don't, you just don't fight it. And if you're going to fight it, you're going to, you're going to fight it, or you're going to take it on against some very key levels. Not when the market starts to go on and break down. By that time, you're already, too, already too late. Uh, let's see, JT says, "Good morning, Paul. Aussie Kiwi bounce from 1160 support. Does this price action suggest new highs?" above 113. So we'll take a look at that. Like I said, generally I don't look at cross rates, um, but we'll go in and take a look at those because um, it's like I would say on the morning edge, uh, primarily covering FX. So we'll jump into the charts quickly and we'll take a look at that uh, Aussie Kiwi that uh, JT is referencing. So let's jump into the charts now. It's had quite a bit of good run. Well, you know, with it, with the um, the run that we've seen on iron ore for the while, the iron ore w was coming apart at the at the at the seams, and now since that's turned around, we've got a big, huge boost in the Aussie. Now Aussie's come into that 61 percent, and it's also come in towards the bottom, uh, which is resistance of a zone above the market. So I would expect a little bit of a pullback in the Aussie. Let's see if we can get a better look. And if I remember this, this
this is actually supposed to be, I remember Blake talking about this, the Kiwi, I think this is when they, uh, the, um, I think it was the, uh, the RBNZ made an announcement or something, I believe they were saying this was actually, not a misprint, but actually a good, good uh, number. Let's go and back this out to a daily, hopefully get a little bit better picture of this. You might have to even jump it back towards a week. We've got a pretty decent line here coming up to 1280.81. And this is actually on a weekly chart. You know, I expect the Aussie to go in and pull back a little bit, so I think we're going to have some trouble in this in this area. Now, I know there's a lot of problems with the, with the Kiwi itself, but I think it's going to have a hard time getting past this area. That's, and this is actually on the weekly chart. So you got a pretty good solid line here. And that's the 1281. Let's go and pull this out a little bit further. It's going to have a really tough time. You know, it made a climb up here to 1315, but if you look here, with the exception of this one bar, the highest they've been able to get out on a weekly close has been right here. It's actually closer to about 1277. So the, the highest we had on a weekly close was 1307, and you can see here when the market made a foray above 113, it was quickly uh, <coughs> slapped back to the tune of about, what, 100 pips. And I actually expect the Aussie to go in and pull back. We've had that massive run. If you remember uh, when I filled in for Black, I think it was about two or three weeks ago, and we were talking about the Aussie, and some people were talking about trying to take the other side. And I said, you know, you got to be very careful because once the Aussie gets going in one direction, it really goes. But we've gone pretty extended. I took a look at it today. We've gone just a little bit past the 61%, and we've come up to a pretty key resistance. I would look for the Aussie to go in and pull back in here. And then, uh, so this will probably allow this market to pull back. And as I said, this is coming in at 1277. And this is actually on a weekly chart. So I think this market would have to pull back a little bit and then regather itself, and then maybe go on and move from there. I would, if, if you're not already long, I definitely wouldn't be putting on any positions in here. I would want to wait for a pullback. So here we are on the 13, uh, on the two hour chart. Here's that 1277. And you can see how the market went to the 1277. And this is just on the two hour. We pulled back pretty good here towards about the 1150. We relaunched and we got above the 1277. You didn't see any real follow through, and we talked about uh, the best weekly close I think was 1307. So you can see how the market has really had some trouble up in up in here, and then finally the market got back below 1277. We kind of fought a little bit in here to see if we can get above it. We couldn't take it out, and you can see then they just leaned on to the downside. Now we found some support in here. You can look at these touches coming across the board, which is 11.54. And in order to get this market going back up here, you're going to have to keep past 12.39. On a two-hour close. A two-hour close of a 1239, 
sets us right back up here towards this 1277 challenging. But before we can get to the 1277, you would have to get a two-hour close above 1239. If someone was aggressively trying to short this, they could go on and short it and just look for a close, have a stop with the close of a close above 1277. But I think this market is going to have to go on and, and work somewhat lower. And then if you look, it's been on a pretty good extreme uh, upside run. So you see how they've had this pretty fab fabulous run, okay? And it's gone like almost vertical. So we broke the trend line. The market would try and have to come back, but my guess is right in here. Nothing's happening unless you get uh, a two-hour close above 1239. I think that this market has to go on and pull back. And then how far it's going to pull back, let's look at about a 38%. So they made this run toward, you see how they pull back towards this 23, 23%. My guess is the 38% is 1029, probably here 1078. A test of this, looking here. See this little high right here? Probably right there you get some little bit of short cover. My guess is we've got to make it back down to 1077. And nothing happens unless you get a two-hour close above 12.39 will challenge this area, but frankly, I just think that the Aussie has gone too far. I know the Kiwi has a lot of trouble, but we've had a pretty good pretty good run on it. Uh, like I said, if you're not already long, I wouldn't be getting long. Amanda asks, is that the weekly two on the, on the uh, Aussie Kiwi in very head and shoulders? Uh, let's take a look at this. Now, this is currently around the, on the two hour. Let me get rid of this. Now, that's on the, on the, on the two hour. Let's go and take a look at this on the weekly. And it certainly definitely does look like an inverted head and shoulders. But once again, it doesn't mean that we can't we can't go and pull back. Now, if you're looking for for a big, long, super big move, move uh, yeah, then I guess you know. And the one thing, I mean, it, it isn't an inverted. It's kind of like a busted looking uh, inverted, but overall, okay. And and like I said, the Kiwi itself has a lot of problems, and the Aussie has been extremely oversold for a very long time. I still think we're going to have to pull back. And if you look for pullbacks, look at this. This is 1080. My guess is right in here, if you look on the weekly, you see these touches coming across here? That's 1059. And we're talking about that 1050. This is where I would like to see the market at least make a run back, which if you think about it, is still another 150 pips lower. And we're already looking where the market could easily pull back another 100 pips right now. So I would, would look to add um, pullbacks, but not to pullbacks closer to a 10 to 1050. Even though from a longer term view, you do make, Amanda makes a good point. You're looking at an inverted head and shoulder. I just think that we're just quite stretched at this time. And we're going to move into the Aussie to give us that perspective. And that's on the two hour, which I think we're really stretched here. Once again, I don't see anything happening on this when we get it on a very short term basis unless we get a two hour close above 1239. So let's go and take a look at the Aussie for some nice perspective. And this is on the two hour. Now you can see here we had a hell of a run on the upside. Now we've come in here into the 61% and we even have a very nice you know, I wouldn't necessarily call it a shooting star because some people confuse the shooting star. They say this this little uh, 
designation. They go, well, that's a shooting star. Now, a shooting star, is that's the whole idea. A shooting star, the width should be much longer. I would attribute this closer, more towards a, a little bit of a long graveyard doji. Or, so, but you're coming into a very key area. This is a 61%. It's a 61% of 6827 to 8164. So let's back up this bad boy for some perspective. Now, if you look here, we'll come up against the 7693. And you see that's the top. We're coming we're up towards the bottom of this zone, 7693, So let's back this up to get an idea of what was going on there. And here we are. Now, you'll see here, there... So further, you can see up here at the, the top towards the same 78, what, 78, 77, 78, 80, whatever. You can see that that's been a very key level. It was key level as the market tried to get through it. It's had some battle, broke down, tried to get back above it, battled, rallied, came back for support, and then eventually, let's go back in here eventually moved much much higher before it came back. But you can see here in this zone, it's pretty much the same thing here. And I think that, that I think it's 76.92 on the bottom. We're coming into some pretty good, good value. I want to say value, some good supply right in here. Some very good supply. If the market will go on and you would see some pushback. So I think that the Aussies had a pretty phenomenal run. Now, I saw a headline uh, right before the Asian session, uh, not yesterday, the day before yesterday, and uh, Nick Trades uh, retweeted it. Um, and the guy was saying, uh, Arnold Futures are basically limit up. So that was, you know, the honor futures already been up pretty strong for a while, but they took it up another level. And if you look at here where we were yesterday in the Aussie dollar, we poked above the highs up here, but it's not like we screamed higher. If we would have made a move into the 76.93, maybe busted up to 77.26, and then held them still here above 76.50, I'd say you got something. But the idea that uh, after a pretty good long run in iron ore futures to the upside, and they go limit up, or what the guys were attributing is limit up in the Asian, Asian session, coming into the Asian session, and all the Aussie can do is hit the, hit the stops here for about another 30 pips. And then you see this, which is essentially like a graveyard doji. I would not call it a shooting star because the wick's not that long, okay? But generally, the graveyard doji it looks like the, you know, the the you know, obviously gives you uh, kind of or suggests an area of foreboding or that the market's concerned, okay? So with the graveyard doji, it looks like the market's pretty tired. And what's, what is the market been doing? It's had this good run up here. And now the market starts to get, looks like it's kind of somewhat gassed. So you have to look at how the market reacts. If you get, the, one of the reasons why the Aussies had such a fabulous run is because you've, well, there's been some other, other reports come out you know, as far as economic sentiment, but the iron ore futures have been huge. So for iron ore futures, after that move to tack on another limit up move coming into the Asian session day before yesterday, and for the Aussie to only tick up a little bit higher, is concerning. And then when you get this close, I think people were willing to go on and exit out of some of their longs and get this push. So my guess is we're going to have to work lower and first stop realistically is going to probably be right here at the 7583, right in here. That's why, and if you look at this move here, that's just my first stop. I would think probably closer towards 7534, which is 100 pips away, okay? Thus, 
my thinking is that you're just too far stretched in the Aussie Kiwi. That's why I have to look for more towards a pullback we talked about on the weekly. I think it was like 10.59. I'm looking for something closer to 10.50. So Amanda makes a good point. It looks like on a weekly we have an inverted you know, head and shoulder, so probably it's going to eventually point up to going much higher. But I, have, if it was me, I have no interest in buying this thing up here. Yeah, if I hold it long enough, I'll get paid. But why am I going to go into, go into water for a while? I'll, I'd rather just come in and buy it on a move towards 10.50. Doesn't mean it can't dip a little bit lower, but I'd feel more comfortable buying on a move towards 1050 and I'd be able to go in and save myself a you know a nice chunk of change of about 150 pips. But that's my take there, you know, on the Aussie Kiwi. But like I said, you can't make a move higher without a move above this 12.39. And I'm talking on a two-hour close. And like I said, this market looks you've had a nice pullback from there. But I think overall, when you look at how the Aussie is doing, obviously it's the Aussie versus the dollar, but I just think that it's really well overstretched. And I would like to see a move closer. I mean, you'll, you'll see some short coming in here at 75.83, but I think a move to test the 7534 is more in the offing and probably closer towards right there. Seventy five fifteen. I would look for a move closer to seventy five fifteen, which is a hundred and a hundred and fifteen pips away. That's that's where I'd be looking for the market ultimately to get to go. It doesn't mean it may not make it all the way to 75.15, but that's what overall what I'd be targeting, targeting and why I would not want to be a buyer of the Aussie Kiwi at this point until we get closer towards like 10.50. So it's already time for a break. Um, Barry has asked about... Uh, the dollar CAD. So we'll go on in and we'll move into the dollar CAD and then we'll come back to the euro. You know, my whole thing, you know, those are on the European crossover, we went into absolute ridiculous, uh, sound like a broken record detail as to why this market would not break lower. Um, and so those on the European crossover were well set up for a move much higher in euro and coming into. FOMC, I haven't discussed with Blake, the, the downside risk was 1020 uh, because in case Yellen said something a little bit more, you know, slightly hawkish in case the market didn't do anything, but obviously it was all good from the get-go and that 1020 wasn't even going to be close to being tested. The 1020 was the 50% of the recent range. That was my risk. That was the risk for the longs, uh, but like I said, uh, we were all dialed in expect a much higher price in, in the euro. But we're going to move in, we're going to go and take a break, and uh, we're going to take a look at the dollar CAD as soon as we go in and get back. Uh, let's just go and get ready for that. Okay, everybody, I'm keeping the break short so we can keep the analysis rolling. Uh, Roy says, your music really sucks because it's Oasis. Well, you know what? Roy, it's a free webinar, so you have, you're free to leave. I really don't care. I mean, seriously. I mean, I'm filling in so that that the the, uh, the webinar will be covered, and I skip my own own webinar. So if you don't like the music, uh, it's a free webinar, so you can leave if you like. Um, so let's go on and move into the dollar cat. So the dollar cat continues to remain under under pressure because obviously what's happened with the crude oil, I mean energy makes up a great portion of the Canadian economy. So as crude oil continues to move move higher, you're going to see a, a strengthening Canadian dollar. Now we've come off 
a very long way. Yeah, Rob was saying some people unreal. That's the same. I mean, Blake Blake's a fantastic guy. I like him. He's so not nice. But I tell you what, I'm not I'm not the kind of person that's going to go and take anything. Like I said, it's a free free webinar. Um, actually, if, if if it wasn't for the webinar, I'd be trading right right now. So if you don't like the music, as my dad used to say, too bad, too sad. Um, but anyway. Um, so the Canadian dollar continues to be super strong. Um, we'll try and see if we can find some support beneath this market. It's just been ridiculously strong. Try and see if we can load up some more data to back this thing up. Looks like we've got some pretty decent support or a key line just above 29. So hang on. 29 on. Uh, so let's go in and back this up. Here's our 29 on 9. So you can see that on, on the way down from nearly 35, the market tried to find some support right here, 29.10. I mean, it probably ticked down if you look here to 29.02. But we had bounced from that area and rallied up with about 175 pips. We came down, tested the one, uh, 29, um, you know, got below it, back above it. Uh, took it took a little bit stronger dip down here to the, towards the 28.30, and once again, let's go and highlight this. Once again, re really did some some battling here at 129. Yes, yeah, Steve says unbelievable how some boneheads will complain about a free webinar. You can't please everyone, even if it's for free. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If it wasn't for the webinar, I'd be trading right now. And you know me, you know me. I tell it to, I tell it to you like it is. I mean, here's crude over there, and there's some nice action happening here in crude right now. I'd already be off off my my gig and, and trading. But anyway, getting back back to this. Um, so we got got the this 129, which is Pretty key. This 29910, obviously below 2863, and then uh, I think this is 2832. We're going to bring up right here. I still think, and that is 2832. I still believe the the crypto market is really super stretched in here. That being said, uh, as I was mentioned earlier, they're just coming on now. The last three weeks in crude oil. The modus operandi is you don't fight it on a Friday, and I think some people may have done just that. And so, which we're talking about the Canadian dollar, we'll just touch on crude very slightly right in here. So let's take a look at it here on the 30-minute because I think that's going to equate to what's happening in the Canadian dollar. Now, yesterday on the inside call, we were looking for a move to potentially to move to 41.45, and I said you might see 41.77. Uh, I think it's 4177 on a stretch, and we actually got up to here. We made to 4145. The market dithered, and then eventually we did make it up here to 4171, and the market kind of you know backed around. Now, early in the European session, I have the top of well, it's not the top; it's the bottom of this zone of 4191 to 4346, and the market took this out by two pips and pull or two ticks and pulled back. What I'm thinking is people thought, and which this was pretty bearish right here, people thought, okay, that's it, it's over, this market's going to break lower, and may have sold in this area. And as the market broke higher, as I said on Friday, nobody's going to nobody's going to want to fight it. And more key is at the Brent, and we're just touching on this to give you a, a backdrop. 
for the Canadian dollar. More importantly, the Brent got above this 41.50, which is the prior higher. Then we got this pullback, and we talked about 38.99, 38.98, but being the bias pivot, and we opened them low, and that's when we went low into crude. Once we regained 38.98, and they actually retested it, it was open season to go higher. I thought we'd struggle in here, and it did. But now that we've got about 41.50. This, you know, you can't get in the way of this market. And what's a driver right now? And I saw something uh, from I think it was a uh, it was a Energy Rosen oil merchant. He had retweeted out some research about the demand in India. And so today on on Reuters there was a story about that demand. And that's really got the bid going. I and mean, when I, I tweeted out that story or tweeted out the headline on the inside call, and the uh, crude oil was a little bit lower, uh, and it still wouldn't do anything. But now we've got the bid going, and you just don't want to fight this on a Friday. So that being said, getting back to the uh, Canadian Canadian dollar, we can, you know, crude oil and Brent are working higher, but we're not – breaking lower in dollar CAD. I would take this uh, and compare to what happened with the Aussie dollar. Remember, what we were talking about the Aussie dollar. Arnold Futures have been on a tear, and uh, day before yesterday, a, uh, coming into the Asian session, um, the Arnold Futures were reportedly close to limit up, and the, and the Aussie dollar only ticked up, took out its highs by about 35 pips, and we ran out of gas, and we've worked lower in the Aussie dollar. So I, I would equate this similarly to the same same thing. So I would keep an eye on, on it. I think that people have tried to buy the, the dollar cat here. I would, I think to be on the safe side, I would come in on Monday and see how, how the crude oil slash bread market reacted. And I think we could take this low out and whether or not we make a move that's this 29.10, I would be buying, buying there. Because I really think that the crude oil market is truly overdone. So, uh, like I said, why the way that I look, I'm a short-term trader, day trader. But if I'm I'm liking the dollar cad, and I think the dollar got a little overstretched. We talked about that from a positioning standpoint because of those people that were proven correct on the FOMC. There was no reason for them to relinquish their long positions. Um, you know, after within that same day or the next day, they should let it stretch, and that's exactly what they did. And we got the euro, which I follow more closely. We got it up to what was it in the 1340s, and now we're pulling back. So anybody that wants to be long the euro, they're probably going to wait for a little bit of a dip, and they'll reestablish their longs, or maybe they took off a quarter of their position or something like that. So I would would if I'm trade the dollar cat. I'd rather just come in on Monday considering the WTI is strong as is the uh, the Brent and see if they make a, a foray down to this 29.10. And we covered that and the importance of this 29.10. You can see that right here. I would wait for this and you can see that's pretty solid. Now there, you could dip lower but I think you'd be coming in at a very good value buy here at 29.10. So here we are here, here, and I think that that's what you want to do, do in light of, if you're trading dollar cad, in light of crude oil still ticking up here. And we talked about 42.35 being key. Here's that marker here. But, you know, I mean, I think crude's overdone. And I shorted it yesterday, and I made some money. But i tell you what, um, I'm being extremely careful. And when I shorted yesterday, it was at a pretty good key, key level. That I, uh, I you know posted, and uh, another level I posted uh, on the inside call, which we're looking at for that 41.45. But I tell you what, nobody wants to get in the way of this on a Friday. I know I don't want to get get in the way of it. The way I look at it is, I don't want to give my money back to the market. I'd rather just come in on Monday. I can I can you know take some wax at it. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and see how the market sizes up. I think it's really overdone, but it is what it is. We'll cover the crude oil, but we're going to jump back. We're going to jump into the euro, but we'll come back to the crude oil and spend some more time. But we'll probably focus right now on the euro, um, the cable, 
um, gold, and then we'll come back to the crude oil market. I just wanted to point that out in light of where we stand here with the dollar CAD. And you can see here the dollar CAD continues to stay weak. Um, and then later on we'll, we'll go on to move into the spoofs uh, and also the 10-year notes. So let's go on and switch back to the euro. Uh, Barry says, thank you a lot. Your approach was excellent. Well, the thing is, is that I'm not um, a long-term tra long -term trader. Some people are position traders. Some people are medium-term traders. Me, I'm a scalper slash um, day trader. So if you, like let's say when we pulled up this Aussie Kiwi, I'm looking, I don't want to, I'm not going to look at things from a super big scope and say, well, you could buy it and eventually we'll get here. I'm looking or trying to give analysis that's actionable right now or in the next day or two, if you want to buy Aussie uh, Kiwi, I'm saying that don't buy it for another 100 to 150 pips lower and you'll be a lot happier. Uh, if you're people are super aggressive, uh, like I said, there's nothing that's going to do happen unless we get a two hour close above 12.39. I mean, you can see here that they got above 12.39, but look at the close. They could never close above it. I'll open this, make it this a little bit. Well, not open, but you see how they made this run back to 12.39, and they couldn't close above it. They couldn't open here. They got above 12.39, but they couldn't close, and then eventually the market worked lower. So a lot of people use all kinds of technical analysis, and that's fine. Uh, but I try and keep it simple. I just look at the levels and the fibs. And occasionally, if it's a big, huge move, like we've seen here in the Aussie Kiwi, I will, you know, take a look at a trend line. And then I do incorporate news. I wouldn't say straight up fundamentals, but news to provide me what the theme is. And you know that with the Aussie rallying back, the theme has been all about the the return move in copper and also to iron ore. And if you remember two months ago, me and Pipsar were talking about the copper. And I thought that we had great weekly support around the 197, 195. We actually got down to, I think it was 192.50. But don't forget, this was like on a weekly. I think actually we ended up having to go on a monthly chart. And now look at copper. It's gone gangbusters. And then obviously the iron futures. I just think that the uh, Aussie dollar has just come too far, too fast. And you can see here, 76.34. So if you're of the ill that you're thinking, no, I think he's wrong, I think we can go higher, uh, that, that's fine. That's how you make a market. But my, my, here would be my saying, or what you, you should look for then. If you're thinking, no, he's wrong, we're gonna, make, we're gonna go higher and awesome. That's fine. What I would say is look for a two hour close above 76.34. And you can see how key this 7634. Look, we close above it, we go right back below. It. We close above it, we work higher, we come back for for support. This is support. We diddle and dawdle in the middle, and where we come back to for it, 7634. Then we get this, which I would, this is you know, if you squeeze it out closer, it looks like it's a, uh, uh, a shooting star. It's not really not a shooting star because you have to look at it in perspective. So you look at it on the overall range. That's not a shooting star. A shooting star would have taken this up to like about 77.30. That would be a shooting star. This is more akin towards a graveyard doji. So, but getting back to this 76.34, so the market runs out of gas. We're finally supported by the 76.34. But notice how when they go below 76.34, the market accelerates slower. Now we're rallying back. We've gone above 76.34, but the market closed below it. We ticked above it, but we're still below it. So. If you were to think, no, I think he's wrong, we're going much higher, then you would need to see a two-hour close above 76.34. Above this is the zone that we talked about, which is 76.93 to 77.82. And I just think that we come too far, too, too fast at this point. Not to mention also on a much... I'll move this... on a much bigger term perspective, and I think you have to look at it on a bigger term perspective, in light of where the market has come back from, is that 76.53 is a 61% of 68.27, all the way up to 81.64.
and 8164, look at this, is up in the frickin' stratosphere. And look, this was the low down in here, 68. So 8164 is way up, up there, it is almost a year ago, and we've come up and run out of gas for up to 61%. So let's go on and move into the, into the euro. And I think we're going to move higher overall. I already mentioned, you know, on the European crossover, they're going to, this is just going to be mile markers. We're going to tick, we're going to tick up to 1376. Then we're going to go to 1492 and take that out. And then eventually we'll probably take out um, August um, China debacle highs, which is 1713. So we're going to back this up, see if we can go back that far. Here's a China debacle high, 1713. My guess is we'll go and eventually make it up to 1730. We'll probably even take it out. We might even make a, a move to 1763. I don't believe in all that noise about 118 and 120. I, I, I just don't, I don't believe it. People are always, they go to the extremes. One moment they're talking about 102, 103. The next moment they're talking about 120. I don't see that happening. It doesn't mean that eventually couldn't go there, but I think that the market is going to get B slapped around the 1730. Because if you think about it, when all the wheels came off the caboose, um, and you know, with the with the China de, China debacle, and what was happening is they were they were exiting out of the position they had been, which was selling euro. And so the euro turned around and skyrocketed. And when everything looked like hell was going, you know, all hell going to hell in a handbasket, we ticked up, well, actually on that day, we rallied 500 pips. So we ticked up as high as 17.13. This market is not going to go to 118. I know most people don't think it's going to go to 118 and won't fell swoop. My guess is, as I said before, we'll take out 13.76. Uh, the next small market is 1492, and then I would expect the market to make a run to 1730, which is the top of the zone, 1492 to 1730, uh, and probably take it out, maybe get above 1763. Then I would look for a pullback of about 300 to 350 pips. But we went into detail uh, why this market wouldn't break lower. Like I said, the people on the European crossover were probably sick of hearing it, but we'll just cover it real fast, not even going to go into any real detail. But the thinking was this, and this is, if you remember, the day that the market broke here, I told Blake I was looking for a breakout in the euro, literally hours before it had happened. And it really wasn't so much on this trend line, just because what was happening in the dollar cad and, and the dollar yen. But if you look at here, we talked about all this volume. And so this had been like, like an area where the market was building steam, like a, a pot, uh, and the water was boiling. And the water had been boiling for quite some time. Look at this, from the December 3rd all the way into, into the first part of February. It had been, water had been boiling and boiling and boiling. And when it broke, the pot was going to blow off. And we literally spoke about this hours, literally hours before the market broke. I think the market broke, tucked off like gangbusters around 1, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And when we came on Blake, he and I discussed it, and I was looking for a pretty big breakout. So we got that big breakout, and I remember talking about this. I said, I thought this market got really overdone. And actually, uh, I was surprised how quickly it came back. And I actually got short at 12.68, and I was really taking it up the yin-yang and I was looking to cover if we got about 14.13. I mean, I'd add it on, but I said, if it gets about 14.13 on the close, I'm going to have to get the, get the hell out of Dodge. So we finally broke, and I was looking for a, a break uh, to about, uh, closer to about 200, 250 pips. There's no way I expected this, which is a move down to 500, 500 pips. But if you notice, they never took out this area. So we rally up here. 
and we pull back, we're coming up to the FOMC, and so, well, and this is actually before the FOMC, this is when uh, uh, the ECB, and I said, you know what, I want to be a buyer on a break here, and I thought the worst case scenario we could see would be 783. I thought that'll really stop out some people here, and then we can we can all watch. I even said the market will rally about 100 pips before you can see the market even pull back for a reaction. Well, we only took out the low by two pips, and we took off. We saw that gangbuster day, and for some reason, some people just got fooled on this and were thinking that's the last of the euro, and. I was telling people it is not the last year. The year is going to work much higher because it held this. So this whole area is of demand, and the market is going to, going to really make the most of it. So for some reason, people got short going to the FOMC, and then I gave the fundamental analysis of why. Uh, I mean, nobody. I don't think anybody expected. Some people were looking possibly for a rate hike in March, but. I think 95% of us, if not higher, didn't expect that. But people were expecting for a rate hike in April, and they were looking for bearish Fed talk. And I was saying that wasn't going to happen because uh, over the last 16 months, all Janet Yellen has talked about is uh, before we go to normalization, we need to see uh, not, uh, sustained job growth, but also a pickup, a sustained pickup in wage growth. And so we had good wage growth since June, but we saw a negative print. So there was no way that the Fed would be looking to hide in April. And so, unfortunately, I guess for some people, they still believed that they were going to hide, and they got on the wrong side of the tracks, and they really lost the rear end, and we took off. So we've gotten really overdone. We talked about this on the European crossover, this 1343 area. And we were talking about, hey, look, the market could potentially run out of gas. 1338 to 43. I had suggested for aggressive longs that on a quick uh, stop, uh, well, not one to say a stop run, but just hitting some stops above 1350 to get short around 1356. And when the market dipped, because we we're looking for a move back to about 12, I think it's 1213, the market dipped. I'm like, well, okay. Uh, I told people in the chat room, hey, you know, the market. May be able to go on and target 13.65. I think that's a great area to potentially go on and get short. But we only made it back to like 13.40. That's right in here, and we pulled back. And I just think that we're overdone here. I, I don't see the market pulling back a whole lot. And I guess we could throw throw some fibs up here quickly. But I think any moves to the 112 even are going to be well supported. We can go and take a look at a. Um, a quick fib, and then we'll take a break. So 11.44 would be the 38 percent, but uh, 12.20 is the 23 percent. And let's take a look at this last reactionary low. And this is just where to come in because I never put my trend lines on the on the high or the low. I always go through the bodies to see the more volume. You can see a lot of people that use volume analysis. They're talking about where's the volume. So but let's take a look at where this was comes in about what? Twelve oh five. So I would look I eventually it might make it that low, but I would be buying eleven ninety two right in here. So let's go on in Highlight 1192. Put some dashes in here. And 1220 is a 23%, so we'll mark that off. And crude's still ripping right now. We're making new highs. That's what I'm saying. Nobody is going to stand in the way. I think it's way overdone. But I'll be doggone if I'm going to stand in the way of crude on a Friday when the modus operandi has been 
you know, they keep making highs on a Friday. So I think any any moves back towards this 1220 is where people are going to start seeing people step in and buy this. But let's say we get a good report or whatever. Um, I think this 1192 is going to be extremely well supported. I, I think that if you get a chance to buy 1192, you, you, that is an awesome, fantastic value or to step in. Because like I said, we're still looking for a much higher move in the euro. That's what I'm saying. You know, my whole thinking was, why would not only what my whole reference was with the FOMC was all about the wage growth, uh, because obviously we've had sustained job gains. I mean, why would Yellen say something that's going to be dollar bullish when all the other central banks are, are bashing their, their currencies? She was going to bash a dollar, but she sure as heck wasn't going to say stuff to be hawkish, you know, that would be bullish for the dollar. And that would basically put the U.S. at a disadvantage. Yeah, she's not going to talk down the dollar, but she's sure as hell not going to talk up the dollar. That's the craziest thing. Anybody that, that didn't, I just, honestly, it, I can't even fathom how people could not see that. To think that, what, you think she was going to say stuff that was bullish the dollar? Are you freaking crazy? When all the other central banks are trying to knock the currencies down. So she's going to be bullish the dollar so she can cut the U.S. off the knees. I mean... Some of this stuff is just plain common sense log logic. I mean, I, I do get read some investment research stuff like that, but man, doggone, that's just some plain Texas common sense logic. I'm just a country bumpkin from Texas, but I tell you what, a lot of these people in New York, these analysts don't even know their head from the rear end. But um, so let's go in and catch a break, and when we get back. We're going to cover the uh, gold market, and then from there we're going to the spoos and uh, tenure tenure notes. And we'll talk about the gold gold market because it didn't make it up to that 1289 we talked about. And then we saw the the return uh, based on what happened with the FOMC. I still think I think gold is going to go higher, but I think it has to go on and work work lower before any of that would take place. So. So we're going to go and take a break, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Once again, it's going to be a relatively short break. Like I said, we can cover all the analysis, and if anybody wants to look at cross rates or whatever, uh, then we'll look at the cable. So we'll keep it keep it rolling along, unlike in the European crossover. We'll make the breaks a little bit shorter in here. And thanks for joining us up in, in the uh, thing here on the Wise Trade webinar. And once again, Blake's on holiday, well-deserved holiday, uh, golfing with some buddies.